One. Welcome back to Horror Time, people. I believe this is our third or fourth time. Like and subscribe if you if you're new to the channel. Hit the bell. And uh, today on Horror Time, we are we are not gonna play video games this time. I'm sorry. I will play video games. I promise you that. But right now we're just gonna be watching some horror animations and say if you got scared or not. Now let's let's just get started. Don't forget to like. When I was eight years old, I didn't have any friends. My mom wouldn't allow me to play outside with the other kids in our neighborhood. I was always alone. The only playmates I had were my cousins and my brother, but it took three hours and 25 minutes to get to their houses. One day, my mom let me play outside with the kids in our neighborhood for the first time because she was going somewhere, maybe to work or to run errands. I like how there's Splatoon Island in the background. <laughs> I got my dolls and other toys and was excited to play with the kids outside. When I got there, no one wanted to play with me. The attempt was useless, but then someone approached me. He had puppy eyes and was cute. We quickly became playmates. Even though he was a boy, he would join me for tea parties with my dolls. He also invited me to play with him at his house. But I was confused because his house looked old and abandoned like it hadn't been cleaned up for almost 12 years we decided to go play in his garden when we got there i puked i didn't know why at the time but for some reason i was disgusted he didn't offer me water or anything he just looked at me grinning and said next time you're going to sleep here too two weeks after that upsetting experience i went looking for him a paper airplane flew to me out of nowhere. I picked it up, and when I opened it, I was shocked, scared, and sad. It was a newspaper clipping. The boy that I played with went missing nine years ago. I ran to my bedroom, and I saw a shadow through my window. I looked at it closely, and it was the boy. He was smiling. Today, I'm 19 years old, and I still remember that part of my childhood so clearly. Okay. I'm gonna give that a five. That scared the crap out of me. When Lucy turned 13, she moved with her father to Japan from Colombia due to his job. They arrived to Shizuoka Prefecture and rented a small house to live in. Her dad did research work at one of the universities while Lucy attended a school at Shizuoka closest to their home. During the first week, her dad was able to drive Lucy to school and also to pick her up after. Things were going fine. She started to make new friends, her Japanese was improving, and overall had a great time. But then, Lucy's dad started to work more hours and in order to spend the weekends with her, he decided to change his routine, meaning he wouldn't be able to drive her or pick her up from school anymore. Lucy had no problem being on her own and she reassured him that everything was going to be okay. The first two weeks walking alone was perfectly fine. Until the Tuesday of the third week. Lucy was on her usual route to school, and then a man around his 30s approached her with a kind smile on his face. He greeted her in English and started to say things such as, It's a nice day, I should have brought my dog, and I remember I used to take this way to school. Lucy tried to be polite since it was common to have people from the area approaching her and her dad for small talk. And since Japanese people are so kind and polite, she did the same as well. She told this man that she really needed to hurry for school. He looked at her, quite disappointed, but smiled again and said, Oh sure, you must be a really good student. Always on time, I hope to see you again. The next day, she saw him again. This time, he told her that he actually had seen Lucy and her dad since they arrived and how he noticed that her dad was no longer driving her to school. He then handed her a plastic bag full of candies and cookies. After that, he finally let her go. In the bag, there were also notes that said, 
Have a nice day at school. You are smart. You are pretty. The following day, Lucy decided to. Okay, to all the boys out there, at least be the same age as the freaking girl. Don't be like thirty and or forty and just be talking to a strange girl, like a stranger that's like I don't know, ten years old. Don't do it. My advice: don't do it. But if you're the same age, I wouldn't say it would be that rude. If you like the girl, you like her. Either way, let's just continue. To confront him, before he offered one of his gifts, she stopped him and told him he made her uncomfortable and to stop being around her. And all of a sudden, he snapped, and the man started yelling at Lucy, saying she's ungrateful, that she was mistaking their friendship. He pretended to be hurt. And Lucy fell for it. I should have told my father before. Lucy said, "I should have told him everything." Initially, she felt embarrassed and wanted to resolve the problem by herself. After the confrontment, the man no longer showed up on her way to school. One day, her class had a school trip to the Aokigahara Forest. The trip was going well. They were walking near the area of the forest and the surroundings. And were divided by groups of ten, with one teacher at the head. It was going to be a long walk, so everyone was told to go to the restroom beforehand. Each of the students were wearing identification, and when they came back, Lucy suddenly realized that she lost hers and thought to run back to the restroom to check and see if she dropped it just before her teacher would notice and scold her for losing it. After checking the restroom and not finding her ID, she decided to give up and get back to her group. But then, the guy appeared again. He greeted Lucy and then asked, "What are you doing here?" Feeling shocked and freaked out to see him, Lucy told him that she was in a school trip and that she needed to hurry up and get back to find her group. But before she could get away from him, he said, "Don't you need your ID?" Lucy froze. She looked back at him and he smiled, then said. I found it on the ground. I recognized your pretty face, so I put it in my car. Let's go get it before you get in trouble. At this point, Lucy was terrified. He started to look more sinister, and she couldn't say anything. Seeing she wasn't responding, the man grabbed her arm and began to pull her. Lucy snapped and freed from his grip and started to run away. He followed behind, running fast while calling out, "Lucy Chan." Lucy Chen, what are you doing? Come back here! She continued running. She didn't realize that she entered the forest and was now without direction. After running for who knows how long, she no longer heard the man's voice. Her whole body felt heavy, and Lucy couldn't catch her breath. She looked around, and everything seemed the same. There was silence. She continued walking for a while until she came across a tending camp. Lucy felt relief when she saw a man come out. She proceeded to tell him everything that happened. He seemed confused and a bit scared of her. But after seeing Lucy crying, he changed his expression to a more warming one. He listened to everything quietly until she finished. The Good Samaritan. They both agreed to call the cops and alert the authorities of the place. Thankfully, he knew the way back to the entrance of the forest, and two of the forest keepers were walking there. His name is Yuki, and Yuki told them in Japanese everything that Lucy had told him. The forest keepers brought them to an information area where they called the police and told them to wait there. They also sent other forest keepers to look for the classmates and alert them about the guy. Meanwhile, Yuki tried to comfort Lucy, telling her what he was doing in the woods. He said that his younger brother passed away five years ago, and since then he's been going to the forest on his brother's birthday to honor him. When the police arrived, she told the officer everything that happened. While another group of police officers searched the area, they finally found the guy in the forest. They arrested him and searched his car for evidence and found tape, rope, and a knife. She thanked Yuki for saving her life. And shortly after, the trip ended, and the school called her father. He immediately rushed to the school, but he didn't scold Lucy that day. He just hugged her, and she cried on his shoulder. 
Lucy and her father moved to Tokyo shortly after, still thankful that Yuki was there at the right time, and she never saw that man again. Now that's a good story. It's not a scary story, but it's a good story. Go to his uh, Instagram, go to his Twitter, and definitely go to his Snapchat, if you guys even have any. Uh, how much longer? I need a small one. Welcome to the world of Pop Pop Hair Surprise, yeah, where there's hair hair everywhere, and all these really- Sorry about that, man. An intro scared me. When I was 10 or 11, my cousin and aunt visited us. We had fun throughout the day, and my aunt and cousin decided to sleep at my other aunt's house before leaving early in the morning. After such a fun day, I insisted upon sleeping at my aunt's house too, so I could spend more time with everyone. Later that night, we all fell asleep in the guest room, the only room that was available for us. I woke up suddenly at 5 a.m. I heard my mom and other aunt talking, so I was definitely awake. I saw that my cousin and aunt's things weren't there anymore, so I assumed they'd already left. I was about to fall back asleep. I looked at my left and saw someone sleeping beside me. I was about to hug her, thinking it was my 21-year-old girl cousin. But then I saw her face. She wasn't my cousin at all. She was someone I didn't know, but she looked about the age of my cousin. She wore pajamas and a black shirt, and all I could do was stare at her. She started doing strange things, like stretching her legs up and down, and just focusing on the ceiling. It was all so odd. But feeling tired, I eventually drifted off to sleep like nothing had happened. I woke up at 8 a.m., looking at my left, and she was gone. I told everything to my mom and every family member in the house, but no one knew what I had experienced or who the girl was. My dad told me that my third eye was starting to see more, but I didn't really believe that. I'm turning 13 now, and that experience still remains a mystery to me. It never happened to me again, and hopefully it won't. Okay, that is scary. Uh, what time is it? How many, how, what? Guess it. I have, like, one more. Right. Let me keep that out. Ever since I can remember, we've always had one of those old vintage Parker Brother Ouija boards sitting in our closet collecting dust. When I was a kid, I always wondered what it was. From the box, it seems like a horrible board game, until one day I found out what a Ouija board really is, and immediately dug it out of the closet. I insisted on my brother trying it out with me, and eventually got him to play along. We put our hands on the planchette, and I began asking the typical cliché questions like, Is there anybody there? And, Can you answer me? Other than my brother jokingly moving the planchette around to imitate an answer from some kind of entity, there was no real response. After getting bored, we put the game back in the box. I did a little research that night to find out how to make Ouija boards work. Many people said online that the most ideal environment when using a Ouija board is in a dark room only lit by candles. So when my parents weren't home, I managed to gather like six or seven candles and convinced my brother to try it one more time. I lit the candles and set them around the table in the dining room, with all the lights out. We tried one more time. I asked again if there was anybody there. The planchette began to move. I told my brother to stop moving it, but he swore he wasn't. I told him to move his hand away, and he did. It kept moving. My brother thought I was messing with him, but I didn't pay attention. The planchette... Guys, I am super sorry, but we're gonna have to end it there. I I love you all. You guys you guys are the best. You might not be a lot, but you're the best. Let's set like, subscribe, don't forget to hit the bell. Bye bye.